Yeah, so uh, uh, today uh, it is about uh, turning knowledge into a book, but actually speaking, I'll be talking slightly more than just turning your knowledge into a book. I'll be talking about, uh, I mean, how to probably come up with what you want to write in the book, what are the formats, and uh, how to promote the book and things like that. And along the way, what I have actually learned uh, while uh, writing the book. I mean, there were, there were things which I thought and which turned out to be absolutely wrong. So let me not uh, let the cat out of the bag right away. Uh, yeah, as we go along, we'll discover what those things are. Uh, so, I mean, for all of us, there has to be a motivation. There has to be a purpose why we want to write the book. For a lot of us uh, uh, who are in whatever field we happen to be in, over a period of time, we have been practicing, we have been working, we have been accumulating knowledge, and we have been using that knowledge. And at certain point, there is a thirst to share that knowledge with the with the world. So that happened to me as well. Uh, so so that is probably one of the motivations. Sometimes, I mean, you may have a, a, I mean, a overarching vision or some new thought uh, that you want to really share with the world. And so for some people, uh, it could be it could be that. Like for example, start with why. Uh, Simon Sinek. So he he had that. I I don't know. He called that. Uh, epiphany so he got that epiphany that 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 is exactly what he wants to do and uh, he wrote a book on that and wildly successful in fact he's known for that and he conducts workshops and seminars and conferences around that one uh, theme so if you have any uh, real great idea which you want to share with the world that is definitely one of the uh, one of the things around which you can actually write a book yeah, one of the reasons why we also write a book is to build authority in the area that we operate. So all said and done, uh, a book is a, a collection of your knowledge. Uh, it's a distillation of your wisdom. It's the essence of who you are in a sense. So uh, if you actually put down in that book, definitely you end up uh, building a certain authority. And you, if you are a published author, there is a nice ring to that, and uh, that is something that a uh, lot of lot of us are looking forward to. So that can one be one of the reasons why we want to uh, write a book. But yeah, I want to caution you about one thing that, I mean, writing a book is one thing, and uh, even if it is slightly successful, somewhat successful, see, making money and making a career out of writing a book is actually uh, actually something slightly difficult. And if you actually talk to multiple authors, they would say that probably we are spending more money than we are actually making. Uh, you will you will come to know why I am saying that. So uh, so I I want to temper your expectation in terms of uh, I mean uh, I mean writing a book is one thing, but uh, making money out of that book is completely another thing. So we'll have to temper our expectations in terms of uh, how much money potentially we can make uh, in a book. So I mean I want. Uh, I want you to park this somewhere. We will talk about this slightly later. You will understand why I'm saying this. So now, um, how to write a book? So uh, one is, what is that we want to convey? What is our idea? What is what is going to be the core of the book? So that is something that you have to uh, really uh, brainstorm about. And uh, that one big idea has to come through very, very clearly when you write uh, the book. So that is uh, one important thing. So once you have that idea, I would suggest that you make a straw man. I mean, make the basic points, what it will contain, probably uh, call it, what are the chapters uh, that will come? How will it start? How will you really uh, do the detailing uh, in between? And then, uh, I mean, how how would you end? So that, that kind of a thing, at least in terms of content that you need to have maybe eight, 10, 12 points. I mean, because with, without that straw man, you will not be able to really go ahead and, uh, I mean, construct a book which is logical in its flow and has something for the uh, audience uh, in it. So it's very, very important to do that. And whichever subject we happen to be writing in, I have written on finance. So whichever uh, subject we happen to be writing in, we will have to bring in anecdotes. We will have to bring in narrative stories. I mean, a finance book can be absolutely mind-numbingly boring. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, I've read a lot of finance books uh, in, in in my lifetime, but uh, I thought uh, probably bringing in some stories and case studies and anecdotes and things like that will make the book interesting. A lot of people who have read my book have told me that uh, the, the storyline in it is also an enticing part of the book itself. 
So I would suggest that uh, we will have to pepper uh, the book itself throughout the book with proper narratives and proper stories to make it uh, a bit more interesting to the audience. In fact, uh, you would have read several books uh, like that. Like, for example, uh, you have the book called uh, Goal by Eliyahu Goldratt. So uh, that is on, I think, if I remember right, Game Theory, long time back I had read, uh, I had, uh, read that book. I mean, it's a, it's a brilliant uh, story. He explains game theory based on that uh, one book. I, I don't know whether it is game theory. I think it is game theory. But, uh, uh, I mean, brilliantly written. So similarly, I mean, there are multiple books. Uh, uh, Ken Blanchard had written uh, books on um, raving fans and things like that. Who Moved My Cheese? That is another author who has written that book. So these are all, uh, I mean, they convey a very, uh, very important, very uh, very important point through stories and narratives. So I, I want to emphasize that stories and narratives while writing a book is extremely important to get your point across in an interesting way. Then uh, when you really want to write, I mean, you have to write regularly. Uh, it is a lot of us uh, tend to uh, say that I don't have the time. I mean, at the end of the day, at 8.30, 9 o'clock, I'm tired, I mean, I want to watch some TV, spend some time with the family and probably want to retire. Where do I have the time? I will write over the weekend. Or a lot of a lot of us tend to say that, okay, I will take 15 days off, 20 days off, and then um, I will write it uh, during those days. I'll complete the book during those days. Uh, I want to tell you something. I was also thinking the same thing, that I will take maybe 20 days off, 15 days off, and uh, write the book. Uh, guess what? It never happened. So, uh, I mean, at some point in time, I uh, I mean, I signed up the contract and uh, then it dawned on me that, boss, this is just not going to happen. I'm not going to be able to take 15, 20, 25 days off and write the book. It is just not going to happen. So then what I did was I set up a deadline for myself that every day I, I wanted to complete it in three months, roughly. Um, I thought that was possible if I write at least one hour per day. So uh, that is the kind of deadline I had set. And roughly, I wanted to write maybe one, one and a half hours. Roughly, I wanted to write maybe 3,000 words, 2,000, 3,000 words. So sometimes I end up writing maybe five, 600 words only. Some days I end up writing two, 3,000 words. But the point is, I was uh, fairly regular at it. And uh, in my case, I happened to uh, keep that uh, at the end of the day. So it was it was possible for me to complete that in about roughly uh, three months or so. I'm talking about the first draft. Huh? It took that much time for me to do the first draft. So uh, during the weekends, I was able to spend a bit more time. And uh, I mean, I was able to put in more uh, pages uh, to the draft. Uh, and I was able to meet the deadline. So that was not really a problem. So here is the thing. Uh, bef I mean, your draft will be a rough draft. I mean, you may think that you're writing uh, Bhagavad Gita. Uh, yeah, I thought at least, uh, I mean, I've write a, written a, a wonderful book. But actually, when you go through your own book, you will find that there are a lot of inconsistencies and there are a lot of repetitions. There is a lot of uh, verbose, uh, uh, verbose text, which you need to really uh, edit, uh, edit it. So you may have to go through your draft yourself, maybe at least a couple of times. That may take maybe 15, 20 days for you to go through a couple of times. Probably you can also, before it goes to a professional editor, uh, probably if you have a friend who will be able to help you or some colleague or somebody else who can help you, uh, please ask them to go through that uh, draft, whatever you, have, whatever you have revised. And they can also give you very valuable inputs before it goes to a professional editor. In my case also, I had a cousin who uh, did that uh, for me and it was again extremely helpful before it went to the professional uh, editor. Now, um, we need to also uh, write a book for a specific audience. So who is your audience? I mean, is it young people, old people? Uh, uh, is it uh, some special interest group for which you want to write? Uh, so how would you, uh, how would you uh, want to position your book? Or is it for everybody? So based on what you want to uh, do, I mean, uh, basically based on your audience, uh, the format of the book will have to be decided. For example, for very young people, uh, today you have that, uh, uh, I mean, book, uh, illustrative books. 
So on any books, I mean, I remember seeing that the kite runner is now in the form of a kind of a picture book. So that could be a format which you can consider for uh, young people who may not want to uh, read uh, verbose, uh, verbose text. And they may be more happy with a kind of a cartoon kind of a contact or a context uh, content or uh, maybe uh, illustrative kind of a book is what probably will appeal to them. So it all depends on the subject. It all depends on what audience you are uh, addressing. So uh, I'll come more to the format of the book here. Uh, yeah, uh, this I have talked about. Uh, then the second thing that you have to decide is that uh, uh, many of us uh, keep writing articles. We keep writing uh, blogs and things like that. And some of them have also modified their existing articles and blogs, or they have made a compilation of uh, the existing articles and blogs, and they have been uh, they have been able to publish that into a book, and uh, very successfully at that. Some people have done that uh, well. I mean, even in our industry also, I know uh, many people. Gaurav Mashruwala being uh, one of them. I think even Kiran Telang did something like that, where she had uh, multiple articles which she had written on retirement. And uh, she was able to string it uh, neatly well and uh, then publish it uh, like a book. So there are uh, lots of people uh, in our industry itself, uh, in the finance industry itself, who have uh, done that. You would have uh, heard about the psychology of money. In fact, psychology of money also was actually a good blog that he had written. Now, when the blog became uh, widely uh, successful, widely successful, uh, so he thought that probably he can develop that into a book and he actually published it, uh, published it into a book. So uh, it is very much possible that you already have material for your book. So you will have to clearly examine whether the material that you already have will be suitable for the core idea that you want to convey to your audience. If that is so, then the, the amount of work that you need to do will be far less than completely writing a book. So that is also possible. In my case, I chose to completely write the uh, content, though I had, uh, uh, I mean, hundreds of blogs and articles which I had already written. But uh, I did not want uh, uh, want that content because that was on a whole range of disparate subjects. And I w wanted to uh, rather write a cohesive book aimed at uh, the investing audience. So I chose to write a completely new, new content, but it all depends on you. It's up to you whether you want to write completely new content or you uh, want to use your existing articles and blogs. It's it's entirely your uh, prerogative. Uh, then um, again, what kind of book do you want? Uh, do you want it as a third person narrative, first person narrative? Do you want to write a story like I was uh, telling you in the case of a goal uh, by Eliyahu Goldratt? Or what kind of uh, narrative uh, do you really want? Uh, even The Alchemist is a story. Uh, of course, it's a, a different genre, but uh, it's it's a story nevertheless. So there are lots of auth authors who have understood that a story has a, a, a amazing uh, penetrative uh, power in terms of engaging uh, the audience. So whether it is a simple factual buildup of material, I mean, that is something for you to really think of. So... Uh, Depending on, again, what you want to uh, do, the format of the book also will, to some extent, uh, depend. So now, the uh, again, based on the audience and based on probably what will appeal for them. See, a lot of times what happens is uh, you, you think that your book will appeal for a certain audience. You have written for that particular audience. But later on, you find that other people also are really taking up and they are showing tremendous interest in your book. Uh, that is not what you probably had ante or anticipated right in the beginning. So you have, for example, you have come out with a normal book with a maybe ebook and Kindle. Okay. So that is for your general, whatever audience, the regular audience. But later on, suppose you find that uh, there are young people and there are old people who want uh, your books. Probably you can consider a illustration book and probably you want uh, an audible for uh, people who are finding it difficult to read but they want to listen as uh, they exercise or uh, uh, if they just want to uh, uh, just uh, close their eyes and listen to that, they may like an audible audio format. So depending on what kind of feedback uh, does come, then you can actually go for other formats uh, as you move along after you release the book. Sometimes what also happens with the book is that uh, the book becomes widely successful and people want to implement your ideas but they are really looking for uh, something uh, 
uh, which will actually put a stay structure to whatever you have uh, mentioned in the book and they are looking for a workbook so it happened to simon sinek and in in fact he has written uh, another book on how to implement uh, uh, his book called start with why um, i think it is also called uh, some know your why or something like that okay how to how to do it uh, so that uh, kind of a workbook also you can uh, do if your book uh, becomes widely successful and if your book is of that that uh, type so if your book is a story book i mean those those things are not really required if it is a fiction work of fiction those things are not required but if it is a subject matter book maybe a workbook can help um, which format will come first what will be added next so in my opinion i mean you can be guided by the publisher because the publisher normally uh, when they are publishing hundreds of books they tend to know what will work reasonably well with the audience so i mean i chose to be guided by the publisher in my case it was the novel book and kindle i was asking about uh, uh, other audible and other uh, versions and they said i mean it can come by and by but uh, right now this is what we should be ideally doing so i think they were absolutely right uh, in that uh, thing so if the books become successful and there is enough uh, say pull for another format of the book then i think uh, even the publisher will be uh, happy to do that then another thing is see once the book is successful uh, then there may be a clamor for other language publications also so it can be other uh, vernacular languages uh, be it uh, marathi or hindi or malayalam or tamil or any other uh, language it can uh, i mean some some publishers uh, may directly contact you which happened in my case i mean i i am looking at a marathi version of my book if god was your financial planner so uh, once your book is uh, out in the market and it uh, it has a certain uh, level of reach uh, then uh, various people start contacting you and you can decide whether you want to really do uh, other language uh, publications and when do you want to do so that Uh, is something that you can uh, decide and while writing the book also uh, i mean you you can think of whether you really probably want to do a sequel um, to start with when we are writing a book that does not really naturally occur to us but lot of times you never know i mean your book can be wildly successful and if you really want to uh, i mean follow it up with the same thread and thought process probably leaving it open for a sequel may be a good idea so that is something for you to give it a thought so that is something that uh, uh, in in my book actually i have left it open for a sequel so it's possible i mean it's it's entirely an individual thought uh, there is nothing like uh, you need to do this uh, this way only there is absolutely nothing like that so now here um, the most important thing uh, for the book uh, for the uh, success of any book is the content that is at the core of the book success i mean so i cannot emphasize that more in fact i would say before you start writing a book you should give it tremendous amount of thought as to what is that that will go into the book and uh, i mean how will you develop that so uh, the content is uh, very very important and uh, for lot of us i think there is so much of content that we want to put in the book so uh, it is not a question of what should be there in the book it is a question of what should not be there in the book and we have to be very very clear in that because we don't want to cram too much into the book i mean you always have a sequel right i mean so you can always uh, do that in the next book so it is not necessary for you to uh, cram everything in the in the in the same book and make the book uh, very dense and very uh, intimidating so it is a good idea to i mean really whittle and really uh, come to the basics of what you really want to write and um, as a general rule i would say i mean don't go beyond maybe 250 300 pages uh, at least when we start writing the book uh, i know that there are uh, there are quite a few authors who have been wildly successful and whose book are 400 500 700 pages uh, they are there uh, they are the exceptions but they are not the rule like uh, yuval noah harari uh, his book uh, homo deus and uh, those uh, other books uh, which he has written um sapiens and all that he has written i mean they are all uh, very long books amazing books uh, they are uh, wildly successful so that does not confirm to what i say uh, but uh, largely speaking if you want to reach a, a wider audience 
you better stick to roughly 250, 300, not more than 350 kind of pages. Uh, so content, work on the content, uh, focus on what you want to have, focus more on what you should, what you should not have in your, uh, in your book. Ha! Ah, now coming to the other thing. I mean, if you thought writing once and do some bit of edits, do some bit of polishing, and then it goes to publishing, you cannot be more wrong. Um, in fact, uh, I have written the book. I have read the book again, second time, third time, fourth time. Uh, I got it uh, vetted by, uh, I mean, a relative of mine. After that, again, I went through the so whole process. Then I went to the professional editor. Uh, they came up with so many edits. So, I mean, it's a excruciating process. I can tell you uh, that much. Uh, so it's not about writing the book. Writing the book is just probably 25% of it, maybe 20% of it. And then the editing and polishing and things like that and getting into a form where it will be published into a book. Actually, it is a long winding exercise. It's excruciating. So that is a, uh, that is a real, word, uh, real word for it. In fact, I would say a fun fact is that, I mean, when I went through the books five, six times, I was so bored. Because you are reading the same content again and again. I mean, sometimes I felt that a boss, uh, will this book appeal to anybody? Because I was so bored reading the content again and again and again. Uh, but that is the process. I mean, they, you cannot do anything about it. Uh, once you write the book, uh, for the edits and everything to happen, that will take at least another two months. So be prepared for a, a very uh, rough grind uh, after you actually have completed the book. So that's very, very important. I, I mean, those of you who are planning to write the book for the first time, those of you who have already written the book, you will know this. Those of you who are planning to write the book for the first time, you have to understand that just writing a book and just giving it to the publisher will just not cut the ice. You really have a lot of work on your hands. Yeah, so that is exactly what I was uh, talking about. You have to go through the manuscript so many times. Sometimes it is, you really feel, I mean, uh, whether this will appeal to anybody at all. And I, di I did feel that uh, multiple times. I mean, I was so bored with my own uh, work, reading it so many times. Um, then, yeah, yeah. So now comes the real thing. See, like uh, after you have done the book and yeah, I mean, the publisher has uh, okayed it. Uh, the, uh, the edits are all there. Um, the the book uh, cover has been designed, everything you have approved and everything it has gone to printing. Um, that is not where it ends. In fact, that is where it that is where it starts. Okay, so uh, writing the book, editing the book, polishing the book, and all that, and getting it published is probably 25, 30 percent of the work. That's all. The 70 percent of the work is still going to be there, and uh, you really have to get your hands dirty. So unless you are a Chetan Bhagat or unless you are an Amish, you better be prepared for the long haul. It's it's going to be a real grind. The publisher is going to do some basic work for sure. I mean, I, I'm not saying the publisher is just going to wash their hands off. Ultimately, it is their baby as well. Uh, so they are going to do some work. But I mean, don't count on that for uh, too much because they are going to do the basic work and you will have to really do the heavy lifting. So be absolutely prepared for that. You have to commit, uh, be willing to commit serious time and money. So this is what I was saying. I mean, uh, remember the very first slide, I told you that if you are really looking to make uh, a lot of money, uh, book writing is not really uh, the place where you can make a lot of money because uh, you will be actually spending serious money. Like for example, if you want to really promote a book uh, and uh, if you want to do that across social media, it may take maybe 30, 40, 50,000 or even more per month. Okay, so it's actually serious money uh, and it takes enormous amount of your time. So be very prepared for that. So book writing, um, I mean, yeah, it is. It, it may be even a hobby for somebody, but it's a costly hobby. I would say that. Yeah, but, uh, but I mean, all said and done, uh, writing a book, uh, uh, making it a success and uh, I mean, in your own field, if you are counted as, I mean, an authority because of the book that you have written, I mean, it has... It has its own pluses, but I don't want any of you to come into book writing thinking that, okay, I'll write the book and uh, the publisher will do that. And I'll go and uh, do some book launches and then I'll 
do some seminars and things like that with the publisher will organize no you have to do everything okay social media promotions you will have to do podcast you will have to fix up the publisher will fix up something but you will have to do the heavy lifting again speaking assignments you will have to uh, you will have to ensure that you have enough speaking arrangements uh, then pitching the book for bulk purchases all that also largely you will have to do okay so basically you will have to do virtually everything it's like 80 20 80 you will be doing 20 the publisher will be doing so be aware of that so yeah like i said i mean if you are a already published author celebrated author like uh, chetan bhagat amish these kind of uh, published authors celebrated authors then you don't have anything to worry i mean you just have to uh, go to the place uh, where the publisher wants you around for signing and for giving a lecture but for all the rest of us uh, it's uh, we we will have to do things on our own uh, yeah i mean uh, i would say that a chetan bhagat or an amish uh, kind of an author uh, is probably one in a million okay so uh, i'm i'm not trying to uh, demotivate anybody but at the at the same time i want you to be slightly realistic in terms of the efforts that actually go into writing a book and promoting the book so that's that's the reason for my bringing this up so that's it uh, from my side uh, uh, i mean it's a short presentation which i have given uh, so all the very best for all those budding authors uh, out here um, I mean, it has been a fulfilling journey in spite of all that I have said. Uh, so all the very best. I'll be happy to take any uh, questions that are there. Thank you so much, Suresh. Uh, guys, uh, yeah. So Disha has been a constant support and uh, partner in today's event. <laughs> Disha, yeah, please go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Dita. Thanks to you. You have organized, you know, such a wonderful session and amazing speakers. I couldn't resist uh, myself asking questions. And thank you, sir, for such a good session and, you know, showing us a real picture for all of us who are trying to be the aspiring authors. Not such an easy and uh, bright work as it looks like. My question to you is like, we have heard all the demotivating factors per se, probably, which is the real picture. Yeah. But what is one thing, right, which should or which one can always, you know, hook up to, to say, being a first time aspiring author, okay, no, this is something which I'm looking for. And that's why I should still continue the grind and the hard work and this excruciating journey towards, you know, writing your book. And once it has, okay, written, the 30% job is done, but the rest 70% when, okay, you're not willing to spend thousands and lakhs of money in terms of selling, what is the kind of a reasonable expectation to have for an author to be, you know, that organically those, those books will be sold? Is that number like a hundred or thousands? Just to have a real picture, like, you know, organically, how many how many books people can really sell if they explore all the possible options? Yeah, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a very good question. So let me answer that. Uh, so if you really want to do the Big Bang, uh, like uh, some people do, uh, they go all over the social media and uh, they promote that. They spend a few lakhs uh, there. But uh, for a lot of us, we don't have that uh, luxury. So we um, we can do our own promotions on uh, on social media. What I hear as far as uh, books are concerned is that uh, seven or eight of the books uh, out of every 10 books which are published don't even sell 1,000 copies. That's uh, That's the number I hear from somebody in the publishing industry. So uh, that is the that is a harsh reality in as far as publishing is concerned. I, I am not trying to demotivate anybody, but uh, I am an author uh, too, and uh, I am sure there are uh, enough authors here uh, here uh, here uh, people who are among the participants and those so who are actually coming up uh, here. So now um, so that is a uh, that is a harsh reality. So one of the things which I definitely want to do, which is uh, probably very much within our uh, means, is that. Yeah, if you do not want to put too much money, that's absolutely fine. But you can do, uh, you can put in your time and you can do various engagements. Social media is something, uh, it's not that you necessarily have to do, go professionally and uh, uh, engage somebody and do it. But you definitely have to spend some time. If you do not want to do it professionally through some uh, through social media marketing professional, you will have to spend the time yourself and uh, do those uh, promotions, right? So you will have to, I mean, you have to have a broad strategy as to how you want to promote your book. So now you have to, I mean, the speaking assignments and things like that, all those things, bulk purchase, uh, 
if at all it is possible for your book. All those things you will have to explore. I think you'll have to cross that 5,000 mark. That's what, that is another figure that I'm uh, hearing from people. Four, 5,000 mark, once you uh, cross, then you will start getting noticed and uh, uh, people will approach you for, uh, uh, I mean, uh, book, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, the speaking assignments and things like that. Of course, I mean, even at the beginning, you will be able to go to people, talk to them about the book and wangle out a few speaking assignments. So it is possible uh, without actually, um, uh, putting in too much of money, it is possible to do uh, your own thing. Otherwise, uh, there will be no authors at all, right? If everybody has to spend lakhs of rupees, there will be absolutely no authors at all. So those are the organic ways in which you will have to, you will be able to do. But uh, I mean, be aware that you will have to put in a lot of time in this uh, whole thing. It's, I mean, it's not like you write a book and it becomes a, a blockbuster success. That's not going to happen. Absolutely. Thanks for that reality check. So either we put in our money, either we put in our time, something has to be invested, definitely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I see uh, Jayadeep raising his hand. Jayadeep, please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Suresh. Uh, I think it's Hi. a wonderful presentation you've given. And yeah. uh, being in the financial service fraternity, you've read so much about you. Uh, just uh, one basic query. You know, when we are writing about, uh, let's say, whatever is available in the public domain. So for example, if I quote a semi definition yeah, or yeah. if I quote an empty definition of a mutual fund, whatever it is, how does one handle that permissions out there? Is it that you, if I say something, I have taken it from a website, do I have to go to semi for permission or empty for permission or whichever entity it is for permission? Because uh, you understand that they add the uh, IPR problems. I yeah. don't want to be, if I'm quoting a publicly available description, then what, what happens there? So if you are actually quoting something which is already available in the public domain yeah. and you give the credit to uh, that entity, that person, that author, whatever, okay, mm -hmm. normally there is no problem at all. Okay. So okay. only only if uh, that is uh, in some way uh, privy to some organization or a person, mm -hmm. uh, then you will have to take uh, those permissions. Okay, some authors are very, uh, uh, I mean, some organizations are very, uh, I mean, they they do not want anybody to quote them anywhere. So, but normally that is not the case. Normally, anything available in the public domain, as long as you give credit, I don't think there is any problem. Whether it is SEBI or AMFI or anything that they have come out with, you directly give the link to their uh, site also. Okay. And you can extract and you can mention where, where you have quoted that from. So, I don't think that should be a problem. So, JDP, you are writing a book. Thinking of writing a book, maybe on the debt market. Okay. okay. Pitch and cover. So. Wonderful. Wonderful, Jaydeep. Be at it. Be at it. Thanks. Yeah. I see a question from Anirudh Suresh on the chat window. Yeah. He's asking, uh, are, do the guidelines on fin influencers affect the author to share snippets from the book? See, what, uh, what influencers are doing is that... Uh, uh, in fact, I'll tell you uh, where the problem is as far as influencers are concerned. Influencers are uh, uh, probably tying up with uh, certain people and driving their uh, driving the people who are actually looking at their videos in a certain direction, which may not necessarily be the truth. So that is that is the problem as far as uh, influencers today, and that is what is being debated about. We are not talking about those influencers who are actually educating the public. So those those things are. Absolutely fine. So your question is, do the guidelines on influencers affect an author to share snippets from the book? Uh, snippets from the book, like I said, no? as long as you give due credit to wherever you are, uh, wherever, whichever book, whichever authors, uh, whichever author, as long as you give credit, there is absolutely no uh, problem at all. Uh, if at all you feel that particular author may have some objection and things like that, which uh, normally if you give credit, uh, they should not have any problem. You can approach them. Today, I mean, any author anywhere across the world, if you approach them, they generally come back in a matter of, say, 48 to 72 hours. So that's not really a, a problem at all. I mean, if you feel there is a problem, you can approach them. But my answer to that is that as long as you give credit, you don't have anything much to worry. Uh, 